everybody so today we're gonna go over my 23 and me test results I've been wanting to do one of these tests for a long time mostly for the health side of things also for the ancestry um, I as everyone knows have a whole host of mental health issues but on top of that my family has a history of Alzheimer's which is a mental health issue I also know I might have a family history of Parkinson's a cousin has it so I don't know if it's my bloodline I wanted to know more facts about my health now here's the problem 23andMe used to give health reports however up until very recently 23andMe did not have FDA approval to do so but recently they were re-granted approval to do I think 10 different health reports currently they're only doing four there's only two that I'm personally gonna be reporting in this video those will be Alzheimer's Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's nibble. Alzheimer's as well as Parkinson's. I will also be going over my ancestry, potentially my traits. We'll see what's interesting, but I want to come on and explore this with you guys. So, I did not make a prior video of spitting in the tube because I figured that would be a 30 second video and whatever. So now we're here, I think it was about five or six weeks ago, and I got the email that my reports were done. This is great. Before we go into the reports, I want to tell you guys what I know already about my ancestry, or at least what I think I know about my ancestry, because that's the more interesting part of this in some ways. I know a ton about my dad's maternal side of his family. We have a family tree that goes back like a couple hundred years at least in his aunt's house back in Germany. I see it every time I visit. It's extensive. It's insane. I have a family crest on that side of my family. So if that doesn't end up being accurate, I'm going to be a little bit confused. Um, my mom's side, I don't have all the same like genealogy. However, all of my great grandparents on my mom's side came over from Armenia during the Armenian genocide. From Armenia. They're Armenian. They basically all came from the same damn little village. So I would be really shocked, again, if I'm not 50% Armenian. I've been raised knowing I am 50% Armenian. I expect to be at least 25% German and 50% Armenian, which is why this might blow up in my face. Especially the Armenian side, like, if that doesn't end up being accurate, we gonna have issues. So, I think we've done enough background, let's dive. I'm gonna be doing this on my phone. I'll be putting up screenshots, split screen, right here, so you can see what I am viewing as well. Not of logging in or anything, cause, obvi, but of like the percentages, all that fun stuff. So, let us begin. Uh, I'm gonna go to the login page. How much fun is this? What if I forgot my password right now? How much fun would that be? Ooh. So it's loading. Let's do it. Ancestry first. Does that sound like a fun time? Click on Ancestry. Let's have it pop up on your screen as well as mine. We've been over my expectation of being at least 50% Middle Eastern and 25% Northern. European. We've got my results. We've also got a dog running around the house causing noise. Put them up! I am 86.5% European, so that's confusing because that means that I can only be 13% Middle Eastern. I mean, not that, but like, statistically. Um, I guess the most confusing thing for me right now is the 52.5% Southern European portion of this ancestry. Because as far as I knew, I had no Southern European in my ancestry. I will cop to the fact that I don't know much about my dad's dad's ancestry, and by that I mean I know nothing. Um, holy shit, what is going on with this lighting? Thank you, window, for just being obnoxious but um but even without knowing my dad's that means I don't my dad's dad's that means I don't know 25% of my ancestry so 
52.5 being from an area that I didn't think I had any ancestry is confusing. Uh, 34.2% Italian is something that I didn't think I had any Italian blood. So the 18.3% broadly Southern European, I guess I could maybe account for with maybe they're considering Turkey, Southern Europe, like maybe it's that far west, maybe we're talking about Istanbul and maybe some of my Armenian blood is Turkish. The confusion dance. Confusion dance. But for 34.2 to be specifically Italian is fucking with me a little right now. I'm a confused llama. Let's scroll down. 25.1% Northwestern European, as I expected. Um, for all I know, that could be almost all my dad's mom's side, which is what I expected. However, it does say I'm only... Six, 4.8% German and French. When you have been raised with an expectation that you are this much something and this much something else and then it's thrown at you that you are 4.8% German when all of your family lives in Germany, that kind of throws you for a loop. But I am 18% broadly Northern European, so that could all be German. That could just be they didn't pinpoint it well enough. And then I'm 8.9% broadly European, so maybe my dad's mom's side is all what we thought it was, and this is just not understanding it well enough. Um, then we've got my Middle Eastern, 13%. I know I'm really white, but I promise I'm Armenian. Uh, however, this is much smaller than I thought it would be. And then we go to the, like, negligibles. I have a uh, 0.1% East Asian and Native American. And then even less than that of, like, the specifics within that category. I'm not going to try to claim any of that. It's not, like, at all fair to me. And then 0.4% is unassigned. Yes, yeah, this is screwing with me right now a little bit, especially the like, oh my god, my largest percentile is Italian, and as far as I knew prior to taking this test, I had no Italian blood, so I'm gonna have to have a lot of conversations with my family, uh, and they're probably just gonna tell me that this test is wrong. I'm gonna try to get them to take this test, and if that happens, I'll get back to you guys because I want to know where the hell I come from. So, I think we've had enough time with my ancestry report. Let's go back and go to something even more scary because why not? Let's just, let's have that kind of day. Apparently, I have 1,256 family members on this site. DNA family. So, that's probably distant. But, that's kind of fun. Um, We're going to go back even further and go, I'm going to go... I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna go the scary stuff. Let's see if I have the genes for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Let's let's do it. So we're gonna go to genetic health risk. It's terrifying. Those are the two I'm gonna go over right now because I'm not ready to just like throw myself into all four, but I'm gonna do the two that like scare me. Apparently it's one page. Okay. Popping up on your screen. So as you can see, hereditary thrombophilia. That is something that I knew I already had. I am something called Factor V Leiden. And it makes me more prone to blood clots. Um, for this reason, I have to be careful when I'm on birth control. I cannot smoke when I'm on birth control, which, why would I do that anyway? Um, so while that might not be a great thing to have pop up on your report, in my case I already knew about it, so it's not big of a deal. And as you can see, I don't have the genes for late onset Alzheimer's, I can't pronounce words, um, or Parkinson's disease. I don't even know what the third one is, but I don't have it, so I don't really care. Um, <laughs> this is my fucking happy dance. Um... This is my happy dance because I was sure that at least the Alzheimer's report was going to come back positive because I have it on both sides of my family and my grandmother passed away from Alzheimer's. So I was sure that that was going to come back positive. 
100% in my own mind sure of that. I was scared. I didn't really want to get that result, but I did want that knowledge. And now having that knowledge and having it negative, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, I'm really stoked. Guys, this is, this means, this means a lot. So then there's carrier status reports. This isn't super applicable to me. I don't plan on having children at all. Um, and 100% I do not plan on biologically having children. This is a super, super personal decision. I am not one to say that people with mental illnesses or genetic conditions should not have children. No. Personally, I don't want to carry on those genes in myself. So I don't plan on having children biologically for that reason. Carrier status reports let you know if you carry a bunch of genetic disorders that you potentially pass on to your children and are things you might want to know before having children because while mental illness is something that I don't think is an ethical dilemma to the extent of you shouldn't have kids if you have bipolar disorder, um, there are certain things if you're a carrier you probably do want it to put into account like cystic fibrosis more intense things, um, it's still 100% any woman's right to have a child, but you want all the information you can have. So I'm going to scroll down this list. I might not even put it up. I'll let you guys know if anything cool comes up. And by cool, I mean probably horrible. Scrolly, scrolly, scroll. This is a long list. They do like 42 reports. I didn't have any variants. And that's really, really awesome. Um, that's nice to know. And let's do wellness reports. According to their genetic, like, things, I am unlikely to have an alcohol flush response, which is kind of true. I, I get very sick when I drink alcohol, which I think might have to do with the meds I'm on. I'm not quite sure. However, I don't think I get the blush face. But I might have to do some research on that and let you guys know. I need to ask some people. Um, caffeine consumption likely to consume more. Not true. I'm so very caffeine sensitive. If anyone gets to know me, they will let you know that like two cups of coffee a day will have me just on point. Uh, one is all I really need. I, If I was to consume a bunch of caffeine, I would, I would be a demon. <laughs> be bad especially with bipolar disorder a uh, note to everyone with bipolar disorder out there caffeine is a drug and it can definitely trigger uh, manic episodes if you didn't already know that so watch your caffeine intake deep sleep less likely to be a deep sleeper that's true I'm the lightest sleeper I've ever met in my life so they got that one right muscle composition is common in power athletes let's click into that what does that mean because something doesn't work out like should I be working out? Sprinters and endurance athletes a different composition. I have a common in power athlete, that's cool. Are they gonna tell me what kind I have? I have a CT gene. Aha. I had to really read into that page to find out what was going on. Apparently, I have a muscle composition that has fibers that are common in an elite power athletes, specifically sprinters, throwers, and jumpers, which makes some sense because I cannot do marathon running or anything like that. When I'm in shape, I am much more of a sprinter, like high burst energy, short periods. So that's cool like am I gonna do anything with this information absolutely not am I gonna start working out no but yeah I'm likely tolerant of lactose I hate milk so yeah predisposed to weigh less than average that's not true my entire family is prone to obesity this is this is not not indicative to my family let's do a couple traits and then I think we can wrap this up. Sounds good. So these are, I think, 
in comparison to other people with your ancestral background as well as some of your genetics, I don't expect these to be completely accurate. Disclaimer. Um, I'm not going to judge the site based on these for that reason. Oh yeah, here. Literally what I just said. The predictions are based on current knowledge of how genetic factors influence our traits. So, yeah. Facial features. What are you going to tell me? What is my eye color? Can you get a basic genome test right? Nicole is likely to have dark colored eyes. Yup. My genetic likelihood is 65% for dark colored eyes and 35% for lighter. Yeah, you got a basic genome test right. Good job. My ears are earlobe type. I'm likely to have detached earlobes. Looky there. And let's do one more. And I'll give my overall impression of the site. I'm not likely to have a cleft chin. I would say that's correct. I'm not likely to have nipples, which is also correct. I actually, when I was in high school, considered getting cheek piercings for the dimples, which kids don't do that. <laughs> Most, oh God, don't, don't do that. Oh, so wrong. Oh, so, so very wrong. You were on such a like good streak. I am likely to have little or no unibrow. The struggles, the struggles of being, I guess Italian, but I thought Armenian. I definitely have a unibrow. Uh, I get my eyebrows done regularly, and I think that they are just on point. But the upside to having like thick hair is having that. The downside is you have hair everywhere, so that's that's just wrong. So my general ideas about this, I like it. I think it's a good test. I think it is accurate. They have had so many people submit their DNA to this site. So it's comparing you to so, so many other people. I am a little bit unnerved right now because I'm being told that my ancestry is very different than I thought it was. I want to do more research into my own ancestry so I can compare it back. I definitely want to have my parents take this test. I want to figure out where this Italian lineage is supposedly coming from because that is very confusing to me but other than that I'm super interested in it I my air conditioning is going on right now really as I'm wrapping this up I'm just gonna have it in the background I'm sorry so I would recommend it uh, one thing I don't like they give affiliate codes out to people when they sign up at the site. It only works for 30 days, so I'm going to leave a link down below to 23 of me. I'm not getting anything. This is not a sponsored post. This is not even a post where I'm going to be getting, like, residuals off of owning the kit because it's been many more than 30 days since I bought it originally. Um, just if you're interested, go ahead and click down below. And I've been hearing things through the grapevine about another service called Prometheus believe that's its name um which basically you can give your already read info from 23andme to this other site and they'll spit out all your genetic information for you let you know your predispositions based on current studies for everything so if you guys are interested in me putting my information into there and responding to some of my feedback on that let me know. It will be kind of what people wanted from 23andMe. It's not FDA approved because FDA doesn't like direct to consumer health like scares, but I think it would be interesting. But again, I would not have pop ups with the information. I don't want to give out that much of my health information, but I think it could be it could be educational to have someone actually like Letting people know the emotional effects of finding out when you're predisposed to some pretty serious genetic conditions. Because I'm going to guess that I probably am. I'm just happy I'm not to Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. So yeah, if you like this video, subscribe to me. I make new videos sporadically, so subscribing is the best way to find out about them.
like this video, give it a thumbs up if you found it at all entertaining, and I'll check in with you guys next time. Hope you have a great week. Bye.